we are on to access control lists now, uh, which are similar to uh, firewall rules that you might have heard of. Firewall rules. Uh, they are more basic, uh, and they've been around for quite a while, uh, and there are two main categories of access control lists uh, which we'll go over, and those are standard and extended. And then within that there's uh, two different kinds as well. Uh, what access control lists do are block access or control access in some fashion. So you can apply these to your routers or layer 3 switches. Anything that can speak layer 3 uh, and you can control the access through your network uh, which is where the subnetting comes into play because when you have everything broken down into nice uh, clean subnets you can then easily control that kind of access between subnets using access control lists. Uh, what they do is uh, the rules can be used to inspect uh, TCP, UDP, ICMP type traffic uh, and act upon what it finds. So anything in uh, IP, uh, ICMP, and so on. Uh, and we can do allow or deny type rules. So you can say allow this kind of traffic but deny everything else. Deny this kind of traffic but allow this and, and so on. Uh, all of the access control lists have an implied deny all. at the end of the list. So if you have a series of entries in your access control list, at the very bottom is a deny all, which is hidden. So when you're looking at access control list, you don't have to enter deny all when we get to that point. It's over it's already there. You don't it, it you just don't have to configure it. That's a built in feature of all access control lists. Uh, I mentioned we have two types, so standard and extended up here. Uh, two types of access control lists. The standard only looks at source IP. That's very basic. The extended can look at source, destination, IP, as well as ports. Uh, so we can say source or destination port as well. Uh, and this is really where it gets into looking like a firewall rule that you might have seen before. There are also some fancier devices coming out uh, from various vendors uh, that can do layer 7 filtering even, which really is at that point a firewall, but they can do on, even on the switch level uh, layer up to layer 7, which remember is the application uh, level type filtering so they actually offer application level filtering within your network not just at the borders now. The way the access control lists work is you have a series of access if I could, access control entries which are ACE gotta have acronyms right so we have ACLs <laughs> and we have ACEs. So you have a series of access control entries uh, which use um, the IP that you define as well as some sort of uh, mask and in, in this case we use wildcard masks so those come back into play. In order to make your life as easy as possible uh, and to improve the level of filtering uh, in your, uh, the, improve the level of performance for the filtering in your network, I'd suggest keeping your ACEs to a minimum. Remember, every piece of traffic, every packet that makes it through this is going to be checked 
not just for its header information now, but it's going to be run through these uh, variety of rules that you create. So if you have 50 rules there that it might match uh, and has to drill through every time, that's going to drastically slow down your network. Try to keep your control entries to, to a bare minimum if you can. And the way these uh, access control entries work is it matches on the first match. So th make sure when you order things uh, that they are ordered appropriately <laughs> so that uh, what you expect uh, to be matched matches towards the top. Uh, if you have something that matches a piece of traffic at the top and the bottom and there's a couple entries in between, well then the top one's going to win no matter what. So uh, it works off of the si similar procedure as uh, the routers uh, with the route table. The first entry that matches wins and it will do whatever that says. There's also two different kinds of um, access control lists. We have numbered and named uh, for these kinds here. Uh, so you can have an access control list number 101 or an access control list named stop HTTP traffic or something like that. Uh, and we'll get into creating those two kinds uh, going forward here. For IPv6, it's named only, which are the, the nicer kinds of access control lists anyway. Uh, when you get to, into it, you'll see that numbered is kind of the, it's the older method, named is the newer method, and with named you can, uh, well, I, you can do it for both now, but originally only named ones you could reorder. You can actually insert new entries into a list, whereas uh, originally with numbers and such, you could only uh, copy them out to Notepad, change the entries, and then paste them back into the router. So uh, the named entries are a bit nicer. For IPv6 also, there's no wildcard masks. It's prefix only. So they're a little bit more limited in that fact. Uh, and most of the, and the commands start with IPv6, as you would expect. So some of the commands you'll want to know for IPv6 are going to be IPv6 traffic filter. And then to create an access control list for IPv6, it's going to be IPv6 and then access list. and then whatever you want to name it. So, my ACL. So those are some of the basics for an access control list. Uh, we're going to go through and configure uh, standard and extended access control lists uh, in the next video. And you'll get the, an idea as to why you'd use a standard versus an extended in certain areas of your network. Uh, and I'll describe that as we go to configure it because it's easier to explain on a uh, graphical display.